If you have applied to Oxford or Cambridge Medical School and you want to find out more about their unique interviews, then this video is for you. This is going to be a deep dive into what interviewing at Oxford is like and there will be some example questions at the end so make sure that you stick around for those. So let's start off with Cambridge. To give you a bit of background into Cambridge Medical School, they offer a six-year undergraduate program which is split into preclinical and clinical years. They do also offer a graduate entry medicine program but I won't be going into that in this video. For the first three years, the pre-clinical years. You'll spend most of your time focusing on the science underlying medicine and learning things like anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, etc. You will also get to do a full body dissection, which is not something that many universities offer. So that's something really cool about Cambridge. In the next three years or the clinical years, you'll be applying all of that knowledge into clinical practice and you'll be spending a lot more of your time on hospital wards and at GP practices where you'll be interacting a lot more with patients. The course at Cambridge is itself very scientific and focuses a lot on that, so it's really, really good for those who are more interested in research. Okay, so let's take a look at the interview format. Most interviews for Cambridge will be held in person, but they may be held online if you are an international student. The interviews do usually happen in December, but this may vary year on year. And every student will usually have two panel interviews, but this will depend on the college that you apply to. Each interview will last between 30 and 60 minutes and will be assessed by at least one clinical practitioner. So what does the scoring system look like at Cambridge? They have specific criteria and they focus on four domains. Firstly, scientific and related competencies. Secondly, personal qualities and communication skills appropriate to a prospective doctor. Thirdly, an understanding of the professional career requirements. And fourthly, being able to answer why you want to study medicine and how you chose that career. Some of the topics that they will cover in the interview include knowledge of the scientific basis of medicine, recent developments in medicine, honesty, care and competence, respect, communication, physical, psychological and social aspects of healthcare, ethical, legal and community issues in medicine, multidisciplinary teamwork, and continual learning and teaching. The interview process at Cambridge is really designed to push you academically and assess your capacity. Following your interviews, you will most likely hear back from Cambridge around January. Something that is really important for you to be aware of if you are interviewing at Cambridge is that they look for some pretty specific qualities. They want their candidates to be ready to study at a very high level. They also want to make sure that they are comfortable with the learning environment and how they teach at Cambridge. They must also be able to think in an independent and critical way. They must be curious about the world and open to new ideas. And they must be passionate and enthusiastic about studying medicine. If you have an interview at Cambridge coming up, then I have a treat for you. I have some tips from a future doc tutor who actually studies at Cambridge. Victor says, organize your responses with a clear beginning, middle and end. Start with your main point, give supporting details and summarize your stance to make your answers easy to follow. He also says, explain your thought process step by step so interviewers can see how you analyze information, especially under pressure. Interviewers want to see how you handle stress. So breathe, pause to think and approach questions with curiosity. Relaxed responses are better, and it is okay to not know everything. If you are interested in finding more about what it's like to study in medicine, then we have an interview with a very brutal and honest review, so make sure that you check that out. You might expect your typical interview questions to come up in the interview at Cambridge, but here is an example of a model question that you might get. How would you determine how many liters of blood the heart pumps during an average person's lifetime. For this question, some of the points that you might want to consider include the formula for cardiac output per minute, which is heart rate times by the stroke volume. 
where the stroke volume is the volume of blood pumped out of the heart's left ventricle during each systolic cardiac contraction. The average stroke volume of a 70 kilogram male is 70 mils. The average lifespan of a person is about 80 years, so you can then calculate that in two minutes. They can also ask you follow-up questions, so make sure that you are prepared for those. So that was everything about Cambridge. Let's now take a look at Oxford Medical School. Again, the standard undergraduate program is six years at Oxford and is also broken down into three preclinical years and three clinical years. This split allows students to gain a comprehensive understanding of science and then be able to apply clinically. So in terms of the interviews at Oxford, they are also panel interviews which are usually held in December. But again, the date of the interviews may vary. You will be interviewed by at least two academics and one clinical practitioner. And you are also very likely to have more than one interview. Those shortlisted will be interviewed by two colleges. Where possible, one will be your college of choice or where you applied, and the second will be allocated to you randomly. The interviewers will not be aware of your college choices. So in terms of their specific scoring or criteria, colleges rank all of the candidates that they see following their interviews. They will review their ranking based on the rest of the application, so including things like UCAS score and personal statement, and then they'll make a final decision. Based on their final ranking, students will be given a provisional acceptance at a college, taking into account the preferences of the candidate and where they had applied to originally. Admissions decisions will then be confirmed by the medical science office and the colleges themselves. The interviews at Oxford Medical School are designed to reflect tutorials or the supervision that students have on a day-to-day -day basis. The interviewers will ask challenging questions which are designed to see how well you adapt to different environments. And you'll be expected to talk through your thinking and your rationale before coming to a decision. The interviews can often feel like more of a discussion because they'll be prompting you and asking you questions. So be ready to engage with your interviewers, to ask questions and show enthusiasm. Don't be surprised if you are asked something unexpected. The aim is to see how well you can cope under the pressure and how you approach unfamiliar situations. Following the interviews, you will most likely hear back from them around January. Again, Oxford have certain qualities that they look for in their candidates. These include demonstrating a good ability to solve problems. They want to see you outline your thought process, taking a step-by-step -step approach before arriving to a conclusion. They want to see you handle unfamiliar and challenging situations with confidence. So make sure that you do your best to avoid completely shutting down when you're faced with a difficult or an unfamiliar situation. And they also want to see you tackle problems that you don't know the answer to. So be prepared for further and challenging questions from the interviewers. Again, be prepared to expect some of the more common questions. But again, here is another model question that you might come across in an interview. You might be presented with a graph like this. And the question could be, Talk me through what you see in this graph. Some points that you might want to consider include making sure that you approach this step by step. It might be a graph that you are already familiar with or that you might have seen before in your A-levels, but make sure that you stop and that you begin with outlining everything that you see on the graph. What type of data is it? What type of graph is it? Is it a line graph? Is it a bar chart, etc.? You will then want to comment on the axes. And finally, comment on the data in the chart or the graph and what the correlation is that you are seeing. Once you have looked at all of these things and commented on them step by step, you'll then want to come to a conclusion about what the data is showing. You will want to contextualize the data. So for example, in this graph, the curve is showing the relationship between the partial pressure of oxygen and hemoglobin saturation. Again, there may be follow-up questions, so just be mindful of those. 
Okay, so that was everything about Cambridge and Oxford medical school interviews. I really, really hope that you found this useful and insightful. If you are unsure about which of the two medical schools to apply to or the differences between the two, then you might want to check out this video up here. And if you wanted more tips on how to interview in general, then we have an entire interview playlist, which you might want to watch as well, which will be linked in the description below. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.